Hello and welcome to IC Show TV. My name is Paul Milligan. We're at IC 2019. This is the latest in our panel discussions. This one today is called Installing AV is the Easy Bit, but should we be getting better at measuring success at the other end? So, um, controversial on purpose, I guess, just to try and provoke a reaction. Um, but joining me today, uh, nearest to me, is Christian Bozak from Macom. Um, next to him is another Christian, uh, Christian Glan from Cowie. Uh, next to him is uh, an old face to these panel discussions, Mike Bruman from Vanti. And at the end, uh, last but not least, is Simon Cooper from AVI SPL. So, um, deliberately co prodding question. <laughs> um, you could argue installing AV isn't the easy bit, but um, should we be getting better at measuring success I, I, at the I, other I, end? I absolutely think that the answer is unequivocally yes. Um, I think um, certainly with the 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 the, uh, <laughs> the current crop of um, technology, there's a lot of tools out there that do um, a number of similar um, uh, perform have a number of similar performance parameters and are able to do a number of different things. Um, a, how does a business determine what it actually needs to improve its performance? It's not about necessarily the technology. We know that that technology is there. It's about how you leverage that to improve your business productivity. So you have to understand what you're doing, um, gather your requirements for your different types of spaces, and then map technology to those. So you have to then uh, you also have to understand how your current uh, workforce is working, how, what they're doing, um, making sure that um, you monitor that to start with, because otherwise you've got no baseline. Yeah. So, so you have to understand what they're doing from a, from a starting point. Then you run proof of concepts for your particular solutions, which have a, um, a basis in understanding um, functionally do they work, do they provide the performance that that particular solution needs. Is it um, uh, secure, uh, you know, all the testing things that you need to do, but then you need to monitor its performance. So you've got your baseline and you understand, you know, does this productivity help? You have to set a series of passes and fails and parameters around that piece. At the end of it, you can determine then, did that solution perform better than this solution? And what's the, the um, performance increase going to be for the business as a whole? So, if you, if you think of it as a technology piece, then eh, not necessarily. Yeah. But if you think of it as a performance increaser, the only way you can determine has that actually resolved anything is understanding where you've come from and where you're going to. Sure. Christian, this came out of the interview that I got with you that you'll find in the January issue. Exactly. You were very keen to yeah. that we should be measuring it that other side. What's your kind of philosophy to all that? Yeah, I think it's really crucial because it is changing. As our, our solutions become part of a, a productivity tool, really, it becomes um, equal to some of the other IT tools that businesses are using, it's really important that we set what are the goals in implementing this. If you don't set these goals to begin with, there's also this uh, change management procedure. If you implement technology that people are requesting, that's one thing. But if you implement technology, that's actually to change how you work. And a lot of what we deliver is actually, it does need an effort to use. It's not always just something you implement and then there you go. Yeah. So then you have to think, what are the success criteria in adoption? How, what are the cr success criteria in, in how does it help our business? Um, do we become more innovative? Do we, do we talk more to each other using these tools? Is it to become more productive in the meeting rooms? Mm. So I think it's really crucial that we, apart from um, done, it works, <laughs> uh, we, we need some other criteria that we can yeah. measure on, definitely. Yeah. Mike, do you think the industry as a whole should be better at measure, uh, you know, you can talk about your own company obviously, but do you think we should all be better at measuring success at, at the end? 100%. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, um, and we've also made the mistake previously of getting very excited about solutions that are going to make a big difference, only to deliver them and then not work in, in the field. And I think it's important that, you know, we've introduced that feedback loop internally in terms of making sure our service teams are talking back to our design team to go, actually, this hasn't been a great success or we've seen these particular issues, please don't spec it again. Um, on, on the other side of that, though, we've also had products that have just been absolute roaring successes and our service team are going, give us more of this because actually this fixes a bunch of stuff that um, we've had problems with previously. Um, I also think getting into the detail of the technology, so um, projects that we've done previously, we're now rolling out code that allows us to measure how often people are using particular um, components of systems. And that gives us the ability to better advise clients on what they need to uh, invest in when they come yeah. to refresh time. 
Uh, so I think there's a lot to be said, not only looking at the kind of project context or the site context, but more widely, both in terms of the business, but also for the client. Sure. Simon, how do you feel we should, we, everyone as a whole should be doing better at, at measuring the success at the end rather than saying, oh, what a great project, pat ourselves on the back, yeah. move on to the next one? No, absolutely. You know, just to agree with every, what everybody said before me, you know, Installing the AV is one thing, but if we want long-term relationships, you know, and as an integrator, we want a long-term relationship yeah, yeah. with the client. So we want to be able to demonstrate that the outcomes that we said we'd deliver, we actually delivered, and this is how it's improved their business to take the point that was made earlier. You know, and as budgets come under pressure and costs are constrained, you know, people are looking for to make evidence-based decisions on future deployments. And if we are measuring the success of deployments that we've done, we can show that this has worked, this is where it's delivered a return to you as a business, and therefore this is why it makes sense for you to invest in this or not invest, depending on yeah, the... I think it does come down a lot to then to, to strategy, because that your, your um, technology strategy can only be informed by understanding what it is that has worked and what it, where you want to go with that. And therefore, you have to have those testing processes in place. I think it's important that from a consultancy perspective that we have done that so that by the time it comes to the systems integration piece, it's going in and there should be no challenge just to the fact whether you're trying to make these things work and, and that testing is being done on, on, on that piece. It should be already completed. It should be understood. You're there to make sure that it goes in store and, and, and as properly. And then we can measure that element as well as was the installation good? Was the, you know, is the service and support? How's that working? And how is that independently checked and made sure that that's done? I think that's, that's key and I think it's growing because the service element of what we're doing in our industry is, is becoming more and more yeah. important and that, that, in, that advice to the clients and that help for them to understand to make informed decisions is going to help us all. So. Simon, you might touch on it earlier on, how, how do you guys measure success? Is it uh, keeping the sort of communication channels open? Is it a series there's, of kind yeah. of there's various tests or Various measurements approaches, or? yeah. So, Obviously, we're looking at what outcomes did we think we'd deliver and what outcomes did we deliver. You know, what's the adoption on a particular type of technology? You know, we run various different adoption programs, training programs, to see if the actual systems and the tool sets that we're putting in are actually working. But then aside from that, we're also using manufacturer tool sets and our own tool sets to monitor the performance of systems. You know, are the systems performing to their optimum? Are they you know, are things more reliable than others? You know, where should the technology be going? What technology should we actually be putting in? You know, so we use various different approaches to actually capture what's working, what isn't working, and what's right for that particular client, because it's very much client dependent, because everybody's okay. outcomes are different. So it does differ client to client? Yeah, right? absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it depends on the needs of the client, because that's what we've got to be driven by. Sure. You know, we've got to be driven by what the client wants, and what the client needs, and what outcomes they want to deliver, and measuring ourselves and the performance against so that. So is that set then in that, almost that first meeting, or that second meeting, and where you sit down and say, what are your goals, what do you want to achieve? Is that yeah. almost Most, where, where we end up here, is set yeah. in that? Our that conversations time. now are led by, and I think you made the point earlier, you know, what are you trying to achieve? And then building back, the technology building back from that, not leading with technology anymore. We're leading with the business outcomes. We're leading with what does your business need? What do your users need? How do you want to work? What do you try to improve? And then we will find the technology and put the technology in place to support that and then measure those outcomes. So yeah, I, I think that from our perspective, that should be already in place for you guys to have done. There shouldn't be, a, you, know, you, you have a, a very important role of actually installing that, those products and making sure that they're, they're supportable and they're in place. We have the role of, of understanding the productivity increase. That's quite a challenging thing to, to, to monitor and manage and understand whether it's passed or failed. Actually understanding the technology, you said you, there's a lot of uh, parameters that you can monitor and manage. You need to understand which ones you want to do and why. But that should be in a playbook ready for you so that those conversations are ready because you know, otherwise, if it's not there, from our perspective, you're having to have those conversations as, a, as an integrator, and that's not really acceptable or fair for you guys. So we should be saying, or the, as the client's representative, should be saying, this is what you're going to be monitoring, please make sure that it's monitored, and this is how we'd like you to do it. I think that that helps ensure that there's a, 
a, a clear route for what should be being monitored by the, by the systems integrators and by the, by the clients. Christian, what, what tools do you employ to, to measure success? How do you make sure that you we'll, find that, you get that feedback? And yeah, we, we try really hard to set up some, some KPIs with the customer that how do you measure this when you come out the other end? Yeah. Um, and, and especially these change management procedures, short or long term, yeah. they're really important that they're there. And there you set up the tools for saying, is it the usage? How many times do you use it? Yeah. Is it feedback from schemes? Sometimes we have questionnaires that they have to fill in to say, does the room does do what it should do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what we set out to do with the room. Yeah. Um, so it, it varies from project to project. Uh, and how easy it is to use, and did you find that that actually made, you know, you can, you can monitor, as you say, the increase of actual usage of, yeah. of, of a, a collaborative environment. Did it, did it work? Did, did more people come in and use it? How often was it used? And so you, when you're doing that monitoring, one of the things is people are talking about sensors and, and monitoring all of those things. To actually do those proof of concept pieces, you have to have those yeah. sensors defined. You have to have your parameters of what you're going to record. Otherwise, you end up with a lot of data that you don't know what to do yeah. with. <laughs> Mike, uh, Vantage, you have, is it a project manager's job to, to do those measurements at the end to, to, to measure the success, or, does it, or is there a person or a department in? Uh, project managers are certainly accountable for the outcome, yeah. um, but in terms of responsibility, that's shared through the business. So yeah. it would ultimately fall into commissioning engineers and then uh, the handover into our service team. I think just to pick up on what you were saying, Christian, um, it would be wonderful if we work like consultants like with you, like you every day. Um, well, that definitely doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, and I would say not all consultants are created equal. So I think, I mean, uh, Simon and I are probably coming from a position of uh, actually we've had to step into that role because there's yeah. been a vacuum to yeah. fill. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I think ultimately it's project manager's responsibility to make sure it happens. Yeah. There are interface to the world, um, but it depends on what we're given by way yeah, of. It has to be. It has to be determined. And I think for a strategic approach for a client for long term, it it, it, it shouldn't. You know, you're, you, you know, as project manager delivering a project or installing a project, you know, there's a piece that needs to happen well before that. If you get to a point of a project and actually, yeah, we've got a project going up. We need some stuff. Stick it on some walls for us. It's too late. It's too late to actually be able to measure that. That's why things aren't measured, because you can't set all those parameters. You've got a 28-week program to actually deliver a project. It's not going to happen. So the process needs to change. And as I, I, I've yeah. said before, that the business needs to take, or the business businesses need to take technology and AV deployment a lot more seriously within their infrastructure and actually understand you can't just wait till a project and that's it, deploy it. It has to be a part of an ongoing strategic approach that allows you to monitor, to manage, to under get that feedback, determine where you're going. If you think of it as yeah. one piece, it doesn't work. Simon, you, no disrespect to Vanity, but there's slightly different scales of businesses <laughs> between you. I don't think I was um, saying anything out of turn. But in terms of, is it similar? Is the project manager the one that's in charge of measuring that success at the end? Or is there a team that does kind of follow think, up and things? Or yeah, how does it I think work success is measured at various different points. So the project manager will have the point in time where he needs to measure success against the parameters. But for us, measuring success is not a one-time event. It's an ongoing process. We measure events at different stages through the project, and once the project then goes into yeah. you know, a live environment, then we are constantly measuring the success and the performance of that solution over the life cycle of that, that wow, okay. system. Um, because customer requirements change, technologies change, you know, we have to capture all this information so that we can start feeding back to that client using the data we've got, using the business intelligence that we've built from them and from other clients because we can consolidate all that into a single view across. That's very much data driven then. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, know, we, you know, our monitoring systems capture a lot of data on all of the devices that we're monitoring. You know, so we're now starting to use analytics to drive into that data and find actually where are the root causes, where are the the big issues, where is it working, where is it not working? And then we can apply that knowledge to a particular client or a range of clients. And that's where we then start to build up that longer term relationship and that trusted advisor um, status that we all aspire to be yeah, yeah. with our clients. I think as consultants also, we need to fight for our role so that we, we stick in the game longer. So it's just yeah. not design run, it's kind of design <laughs> stay, <laughs> help the dice. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we just talk, uh, talking about the actual monitoring and management of that, but actually it's our job to have mm. set those parameters. Exactly. And, and it is our job to have um, you know, set the long-term goals so that yeah. those, that information is coming back. And, and you know, 
the thing that you can monitor the hardware, but until you're monitoring the productivity increases, which is again, it's something that's very difficult for a systems integrator to do. That that has to own that can only come from from the consultancy exactly. perspective. Another one you, you can measure. We were talking about that you, you can measure success in the adoption. You can also m measure that in time to repurchase. So if the per if Cofton per buys the same solution yeah. once again, the shorter the circle of them buying that, yeah. that's an indicator uh, for mean, oh, I we did good. I mean, uh, they're coming back. Final the question: now. Ultimately, isn't the, the measurement of success repeated contracts? Isn't that probably the the goal? From what you touched on there, Simon, is that the ultimate goal? Really, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we and is the ultimate measurement of success. We, we want to, to retain our yeah, yeah. clients. We want to bring clients on board and retain them. So the more we can use the information and the data we've gathered to help them make informed decisions about their their future strategy, their future deployments, and you know, work with consultants to understand what's going on in our client base and you know what could be applied to other client base. We're all going to win from that because that will then evolve the, you know, the whole AV industry sure. into something more of a trusted advisor and a long-term strategic, not very project focused. Yeah, mm. Mike. I mean, I'm, you know, new clients are nice, but I guess repeated business is also it's great. A, it's a lot more it's straightforward also a right? validation of your work, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I mean, retention is the key bit for us because yeah. if you're delivering ongoing value, that's good and people will continue to sign into things. I think um, it's moving it into as much of a people realm as it is about data though. Uh, so um, having those quarterly service reviews, actually going and sitting down with people yeah. or doing it over VC, uh, and making sure that we've actually had that kind of dialogue as to what's working, what is, and how things are going to evolve working that back into more strategic thinking. But I think also there's an ethnographic nature of deploying systems, which is let's go and stand next to people using it and go, does this actually help you out with yeah, your day? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Um, because you can only get so much through usage data. Yeah, yeah. Actually speaking to people is yeah. still a great way of collecting That's the performance anecdotal. increase piece that you, yeah. you, you can only see by being and monitoring in a particular but do, way. Yeah. But do you think that is done wholeheartedly in it. Do you think that's <laughs> widespread in insurance? That is what you are one Not of at all. <laughs> Not at all. No. Um, I think, uh, but that's also a client education piece, right? That yeah. I think there's a perception yeah. that they could see that as someone's just standing around and asking people what's going on. They don't, it's about demonstrating the value of that to them. I think that's them quite an important that. part actually, because um, we can monitor and manage, we can do all those things, but if the client doesn't see the value in it, the, you know, and doesn't want to understand that and thinks of it and, and thinks either in a project term or a, just a TV on a wall, you know, how can it be so difficult? That, that, that client education piece of actually, you know, look, we can help you do leverage an awful lot more with the great technology that's out there. I mean, look at the size of this place, there's so much going on, but unless they're actually prepared to put the, the resources into the structures in their internal piece to actually be able to monitor yeah. and manage, yeah. to change their internal processes, change their internal departments, because IT is not, at the moment, set up in most companies to be able to monitor and manage AV stuff. No, no. Generally, they don't even test it before they stick it on their network, if they even know where it's going on the network. So there's a lot of things that we need to help from an AV industry, educate them and educate our client base into understanding the benefits they can get and, sure. and, and how we can help them monitor and, and, and improve. IT's been doing it for a while, so. Yeah, yeah. Christian, yeah. you were nodding to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think um, if you look at it, we're, the awareness of what we do and what our equipment do in an organization, that is growing. Hmm. As, as, as we were talking about, yeah. I think that to the knowledge-based corporation today, yeah, yeah. It, the importance of our equipment is just as it is with the, uh, the production line in a uh, producing company, yeah, yeah. right? Mm. So you need to optimize whatever is going on in the rooms. How do we cooperate? Uh, what are the tools available? How easy are they to use? Um, so that awareness really helps us getting in there and mm. taking that strategic decision, not yeah. only because of cost or, or pain, <laughs> but because yeah. it's really important to get mm. this right. And as consultants, I think it's also easier to advocate that we are there afterwards, so we help them with yeah, the, yeah. the change management process and bring back learnings yeah. up to the next investment, yeah. Well, I feel like we've, we've helped here try and bring integrators and consultants closer together. We're pretty close, <laughs> we're pretty close already. Good place to stop, so um, thank you very much, gentlemen. Could go on all day, but oh, yeah. um, sadly, uh, the internet won't allow us. <laughs> so uh, many thanks for coming, and uh, thanks for joining us today, and uh, feel free to join the next panel discussion. Um, there's plenty on YouTube and on our channel. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.